All right, well, here it is. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to the announcement of the announcement that's already been made. Um, obviously, I'm sure no one here has any idea of what's coming, but um, it's been one of the best kept secrets here lately, so I hope you're all sitting down for this. Uh, on a serious note, this is probably one of the biggest days of my life, of my career, and I'm excited to tell you about my future, but before we get into that, uh, there's obviously a few statements I'd like to make first. Um, first and foremost is Samantha. Um, she's been my rock throughout this whole process and has been my biggest advocate. Having her alongside me, um, helping me through this journey has been invaluable and words can't describe how much I love you. So thank you, Samantha. Uh, to Brexton and Lennox. Um, I know dad's been on the phone a lot lately and been in meetings a lot lately and haven't been as around as, around as much lately, but... Um, life will get back to normal now, so as much as normal is for uh, a racing family that dedicates their life to myself on Sundays and, and little man on Saturdays, um, but can't wait to share this new journey with you both. Uh, to Joe Gibbs and everyone at Joe Gibbs Racing, the Mars family, Norm Miller, um, you guys took a chance on a 15-year-old kid, I guess a kid 15 years ago, how about that, uh, to let me drive your race car. And... You know, we hit the ground running and we haven't stopped since. We've won a lot of races, we've won some championships, and I'll always be grateful for that. Um, more importantly, uh, I'm thankful to, to Joe and, and for allowing me to be a kid and to grow into a man most days, most of the time. Uh, you were patient with me and, and no one can take that away from, from me and take any of those memories that we made together. So, Coach, you had my back when we were there when I needed it the most, so I thank you. To everyone at Toyota and TRD, thank you as well. Um, you took a chance on a, on a young boy like myself, and man, we had a lot of fun along the way. So um, your unwavering support of me through the years has been awesome. Uh, we've won countless races across all three series of NASCAR together with Truck Xfinity and Cup Series racing. Uh, we've had the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, from championships to broken legs. Uh, we've been through it all, and we've done it uh, you know, in winning ways. You guys are always going to be family to me, so I, I do appreciate you guys. Um, to Rowdy Nation, I hear you every weekend. Trust me, I hear you. Uh, you guys have had some supporting messages and have been very supportive over the last few weeks. Uh, you don't realize how much that encouragement actually means, and, and um, I, I mean that, so thank you. Uh, we're in this together. I'm proud to represent the nation, and every weekend, no matter what I decide, you know, I know that you guys are going to be following me along the way, so... Um, lastly, I'd like to thank everyone that's given me their time over the past few weeks, whether that be uh, past drivers, present drivers, uh, team owners, crew members, team officials. Um, your guys' confidence in me during this, during this journey has certainly given me a, a, a shot in the arm. Um, I've rekindled some of those friendships and also made some new ones, so I'm thankful to all of you. The last few months have been nothing but stressful, uh, I'll admit. And it's been 15 years since I've had to make a decision quite like this, but 15 years ago, it was just me. Um, you know, I, I didn't have a family. I didn't have a, a wife and a son and a daughter and a, and a race team around me that I had to worry about. Um, it was just what I needed to do. So this process took a lot longer than I expected to. Um, sure it did, you know, but this is one of the most important decisions of my life, um, and I definitely couldn't rush through it. I had to find a place where I knew I can go win races immediately. Um, collecting trophies is still the main reason why I get up every day and go to the racetrack in order to do this every week. Uh, I also needed a place where I felt like I could hit reset and uh, I could be welcomed just as I am. This change will allow for a clean slate and that's big for me and my family. A uh, new team, a new teammate, new teammates, most importantly, a new boss who accepts where I've been and yet can help me get to where I want to be. Every option I considered had a lot of its own advantages, and that's why it made it to be such a challenge. That's why it took a while, but at the end of the day, one team and one owner emerged as the clear choice. The second I sat down with him, I knew that his company and his people and the culture around there had the ability to compete for championships from day one. So now for the moment you all couldn't wait for, I'm excited to announce that I'll be taking my talents to welcome North Carolina to drive the number eight car for Richard Childress Racing starting in 2023. I'd like to introduce you to my new boss, Richard Childress. It is a, it is a big day. Yeah. Well, you know, 
child the other week when we signed our contract. There was something I forgot to give you. It was your signing bonus. Okay. So I got to give you your signing bonus. Will you hold my watch? Absolutely. How's that? All right. That's Fantastic. all we're going to talk about that. That's there history. Woo. That's all anybody nice wants to talk one, about. It's a nice one to hold on to. And, and since we're doing, uh, we've got a few people coming in. Since we're doing announcements today, i got one more I would like to do, if you don't mind. You know. Sure. Samantha, could you and Braxton come over, please? Now, I know how families work, because I've got a, uh, I've got a uh, daughter, I've got a grandmother that looks after contracts, so I'm sure you look after <clears throat> Braxton's contracts. So here is a contract for an option to drive for RCR in the future. How about that? Thank you, buddy. All right. And you'll be, you'll be a little easier on me than mine were. Maybe better than that one. Okay. There you go. Awesome. Cool. So I, I made me a few notes here where I wouldn't forget to thank a few people, a few topics I wanted to talk about also. If I can get this thing open. Yeah. Um, First off, I'd like to thank the press for everything they do for our sport and for being here today. This is, uh, to me, it's a historic announcement uh, for RCR, and uh, I couldn't be more prouder to be sitting beside of our next driver at RCR for the eight car, Mr. Kyle Bush. It's a big day for all of us. You know, um, I look back, and when this thing, when Tyler explained to me that he was not going to be back in 24. My grandson, Austin Dillon, he's here today, driver of number three. He came to me and said, Pop Pop, what do you think about putting Kyle Bush in that car? And I said, man, I'd, that'd be a dream. I said, uh, can you line up a meeting where I could talk to him? So they're friends and they talked about it and I got a chance, opportunity to, to meet and talk with uh, Kyle and we talked a lot over it, and we uh, had a lot of work to do to make it happen. So I got to thank Tori Goliath and Mike Verlander for all their work. You just don't know how much goes in with any contract. That one was pretty easy so far. <laughs> but, you know, to, uh, to do that was really big, and I wanted to thank you two guys. And we had attorneys. We'll thank them later. We got to pay them. Uh, <clears throat> Also, I'd like to thank Jim Campbell and Eric Warren. They're here today. They will take any questions for the media. And uh, I'd also like to thank Jim, I mean, uh, I'd like to thank Mark Royce and Steve Carlisle. All of these are supporters with General Motors and Chevrolet that help make it possible to put uh, Kyle in this car. I'd also uh, like to, uh, we got Andy Petrie. And we have uh, Randall Burnett, the crew chief of the eight car. They're going to be here, here right now, so they'll be here for questions a little later as well. There's a couple of topics I know we're going to be asked about. I just wanted to cover them up here uh, now. Uh, one of them is our sponsors and our partners. We're going to have a great lineup. We're going to be announcing those very soon, so uh, can't wait. For you to hear some of the sponsors that we're going to have. It's going to be exciting. That's going to be an exciting announcement that's going to come a little later. Uh, Tyler Reddick. I met with him about an hour ago and I explained to him that uh, he wasn't going to drive the eight car next year. We've got a contract for him to drive for RCR next year and uh, I wanted to talk to him before this official announcement. I know there's been a lot of word and rumor out there, but I met with him about an hour ago. And uh, I'd just like to close with, uh, man, when all the rumors started and you'd walk through the race shop, the excitement just in people's voice when they would ask me, our employees would say, is Kyle Bush really coming here and driving? I said, man, I don't know. But today it's official, and for that group at RCR, I bet they're up there, I, I hope they're up there watching this right now. 
I bet they are excited to know that you're going to be the driver of that eight car. And uh, I couldn't be more happier. I mean, uh, I was talking to Jim Campbell the other day, and uh, I said, man, I'm excited, Jim. He said, you don't have to tell me. I can hear it in your voice. So <laughs> we got that done. But that, that's it for me. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Yep. <laughs> Kyle, I mentioned we... We have had a number of announcements here, and this is going to go in that top two or maybe three or eight, whatever number we want to use. It's huge news for our sport. You said that you talked to multiple teams. Why Richard Childers Racing? Yeah, um, well, I think it started earlier this year when we were racing at the Coliseum when the eight car blew my doors off and was driving away. Uh, I certainly knew right then and there at the beginning of the season that those guys definitely had some speed and um, just seeing their overall um, culture of being around Richard talking with Austin and having that chance to to just look at the whole picture of what's going on with with RCR as of late and I felt like it was a no-brainer when when Richard and I sat down and we first had discussions of this opportunity um, it was easy you know it was um, a, a clear-cut choice as I mentioned before the that this was a place that you could go win races win, and win championships right out of the gate. Richard, you've been around this sport a long, long time. Worked with some of our biggest personalities. Uh, you can look over my shoulder. You can look on Glory Road. You're a Hall of Famer. You've worked with several Hall of Famers. So for Richard Childress Racing now, why Kyle Busch? You know, my question would be why not? A driver Fair. that has won <laughs> two championships in the Cup division, over 200 races in NASCAR. His credentials speaks well for himself. But when I was up there with Kyle and we first started talking and we talked about championships and we talked about winning races, I looked at him in his eye and I seen that look in Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s eye that he's hungry. We're going to win. I'd seen that look before. And watching Kyle, I've, I've watched his talent for many years since he started in the Bush series. And just how he handles the car, the car control, the way he drives the car, and take no prisoner attitude, that's the Dale Earnhardt style that I was accustomed to racing with. And I think Kyle has that modern-day style of racing that Dale Earnhardt had in his time. Kyle, I don't know anybody that knew Dale better than RC. Your reaction to being compared <laughs> to Dale Earnhardt Sr.? Yeah, I mean, certainly it's flattering. Uh, it's, it's happened a lot over the years, but to, to hear it from RC, you know, obviously he was the closest to him, and RC being a, a racer himself and being in the driver's seat and putting on a helmet himself over the years knows what it's like to get behind the wheel and to be in the elements of what it is to, to have success or to go out there and, and achieve success. So um, uh, it's flattering. It's a, it's a great honor. Um, Dale Earnhardt, though, is Dale Earnhardt, and uh, there's only one of those, and um, there's probably only one Kyle Busch as it's going to be hard to figure out somebody else that's as close to this one as, as I am. But um, obviously, it's, it's a huge accolade, and I look forward to continuing that winning tradition of RCR and um, allowing myself to, to go up there and, and bring some more championships to that organization that, that already has a storied legacy. Definitely uh, a heck of a comparison there. RC, you know, th there are ebbs and flows in this sport. Always have been, always will be. When you look at where RCR is now, on that upswing, both cars in the playoffs, three wins this year. So what does the Kyle Busch add to that formula that keeps that upward trajectory in your, in your opinion? I think just the team itself, Kyle's going to bring that drive to our whole organization. I know Austin's looking forward to being a, a teammate with Kyle, we've talked about it, and uh, he's excited about it. I think both teams will step it up, and Kyle's going to bring some stuff to the table that we know that's going to make us a lot better working with Randall and his team. Well, now it's time for y'all's questions. I know we've had questions uh, leading up to this. Uh, make sure I 
know where Wendy is with the microphone. We're going to go here uh, to Jordan, and we'll come over here to Claire and Lee. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. This question is for Richard. Uh, Richard, will Richard Childers Racing team consist of three charter cup teams in 2023? Yes, we will have three charters. And Tyler Reddick will drive that other charter team? And char Tyler Reddick will drive for that other charter team? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll go over here to Claire and Lee. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I have a question for both of you. Kyle, what's the status of your truck team? What's going to happen with your truck team? And uh, is Richard serious about having a plan for young Braxton? <laughs> uh, I'll address the truck team part. Obviously, there, there was an announcement today uh, with RCR and Kyle Busch, and uh, KBM has not been a part of that yet, although we are still working on all that sort of stuff with uh, General Motors and Chevrolet. So. Um, Kyle Busch Motorsports intends to compete in the truck series as a Chevrolet branded team next year. Whether that's two, three, four entries, we're not quite certain on that yet, but we're working th through those details as we can right now. And uh, hopefully, again, we, we can have an announcement on that here shortly. And the Brexton piece, uh, you got to ask him that question. I, uh, I can't, it, yeah. You probably would have signed the deal, but uh, I'm going to turn it to Richard. What about the Brexton deal? And then <laughs> how did you and Kyle get to the point, you told me at Indy that you had amnesia about anything in the past, like the hold my watch deal. How did you get to the point where you were on the same page? That was pretty easy. That was 10 years ago. We both have grown a whole lot over time and uh, we talked about it and all this history and I like talking about the future and learning from the history. I made a few mistakes in my life, I will admit that. And uh, as far as Braxton, I hope that Kyle don't chew me out like I got chewed out with Dale when we, they were racing in Japan. So be careful how you beat on your dad when you start driving for us. <laughs> Are you serious? Sure. I'm serious. He's got first right. I just ask that you keep that piece of paper. If it happens, we might have a home for it. <laughs> Lee? Kyle, how does it feel to go to work for a man that you know will fight for you, literally, um, you know, in, in the garage and beyond? Well, fortunately, I get to hold the watch now. So um, <laughs> the opportunity that presents itself right now with, with going to work for, for Richard is, um, you know, it's, he's an inspiration to our sport, right? Like, he's a racer. He's a racer's racer. He's been in this deal. This is all he's known for 50 years. And so for me to have that opportunity to to look up to somebody like him, to be able to get out there and, and go race for somebody like him um, gives me full confidence that we're going to have the, the stuff that we need. And to see the success of that organization as of late, um, you know, and the resurgence they've already been creating is certainly um, very intriguing. But yet I definitely hope that I can add to that and um, build that to the next level and, of course, continue the legacy of RCR. We'll go here and then back over here. Trey Downey Motor Racing Network. Kyle, you mentioned that there's been a lot of stressful nights. This has been a very stressful time. When did it crystallize, like, in your mind, the timeline of when you decided that you'll drive for Richard next year? Um, yeah, I mean, timeline's tough. Um, I, I don't know. It was last week, probably. Um, you guys are all well aware. <laughs> there's no secrets in our business. Um, you know, so... You know, the, the toughest part for me in being able to come to a decision when I knew what that decision was, was obviously, it's no different than our sport. Every single weekend we go race, there's, there's one winner and the rest of them are runner-ups, right? So um, just appreciating, and, and as I mentioned in my monologue there to begin with, was just the opportunity to meet with all of those and to have that chance to sit down with them and meet my appreciation to them, willingness to talk with me and give me a shot to uh, go race for those different teams. So um, that was really important to me to um, just not burn any of those bridges and to have that shot of being able to do it respectfully and the best way that I knew how um, as we work through this process. And is this a multi-year agreement to drive for Richard? Multi-year. Okay, we'll go over yes. here, Bob and Alan. 
uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports for kind of for both of you. But Kyle, can you um, did you have any I don't say worries, but apprehension from driving the eight, which is a little bit of history in this sport with a variety of drivers. And then for Richard, why Kyle in the eight versus whatever charter, third charter car number you're gonna have that you're playing for Reddick? So, um, no, to me, I had no reservations whatsoever to, uh, to come and drive a number. Um, you know, the, the number of the race, when I joined Joe Gibbs Racing, it was number eight. You know, when I joined Hendrick Motorsports, it was number five. Like, I've driven the cars that the owners have numbers of. And that's sort of how we've done it a little bit at KBM, um, where we now have our set numbers that we have. And when we have drivers, they come in, they drive our numbers. You know what I mean? So um, this, to me, is, is being able to go over to a, a storied race team and to have the opportunity to, to drive Richard's car, um, whatever number that is, uh, I'm, I'm happy to drive it. So I'm glad it's the eight. I'm excited about that and um, ready for that chance to be able to make a new legacy with that number. Yeah, and for me, uh, the reason we're uh, going down this road we're going is uh, I want to build more and more with that eight team, and I don't want to do it in a one-year deal. It's a long-term deal to go out and win races and race for championships, and that's the reason when Kyle and I worked this, uh, this out, it was time to put him in that car to help build the number eight team and keep it going at the level it's going for a longer term contract. Uh, Alan Kavana, PRN. Uh, Kyle, we know you had options. Uh, what was it about RCR and Chevy? What did they offer that maybe others couldn't for your next phase of life? Um, I wouldn't say there were others that couldn't. Um, we went into every single race team and told them the exact same thing, um, myself and, and Mike Verlander, um, where we told everybody like, hey, we'd like to be between X and Y, and, and if you add in a Z, then, you know, let's go, you know, let's see what that looks like. And so uh, all of them, you know, it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a money play um, that had nothing to do with it. The, um, the opportunity in itself and just, again, you know, talking about the the legacy and the history of RCR, talking to some of the people that are there, having the chance to be able to go over there and, and work with a race team that really wants you, that is welcoming to you, get it, welcome, um, to have that opportunity to go up there uh, and, and race is, is exciting for me, so I'm ready for the next chapter. For Richard or Kyle, the XY, the Z, was, what was the Z for, of RCR? Uh, just everything. I mean, it just, it's, it's, a, it's an all-around thing. It's encompassing, right? So, um, you know, what was the extra perks? There, there, there isn't any, you know, the opportunity to just be able to go race with um, a team that has shown potential this year already and has won races this year already is a proven team for me to be able to jump right into and go continue that and carry it to the next level. Jordan Bianchi, the Athletic, this question for Richard again. That conversation you had with Tyler Reddick earlier that he wasn't going to be driving the eight and he wasn't going to be paired with Randall, um, how did that go and what was his reaction? It, it was uh, okay. He understood our contract and what's in it, and I just told him we had a contract to race him next year, and I talked to him later about uh, keeping posted on how it's going and what we're going to be doing, how we're going to put it together. And a follow-up, he and Randall have had a lot of success this year, won two races, could have won several others. They're in championship contention. Why break that pairing up a year early, um, considering where they're at? I think I answered that question earlier is I'm not looking for a one-year deal. I'm looking to build a strong team for the future and, and put, putting him in another car because his contract's just for one more year and having Kyle for a long-term contract. Then uh, that's the perfect answer, I think. It was a no-brainer. Any other questions for the media before we do a breakout over here, Adam, and then to Claire? I think that's Adam, yeah. Adam Stern, Sports Journal. Congratulations on the deal, guys. For Richard, you mentioned that you already got a good sponsor lineup. Do you already have commitments, or is it just some good early indications? Yes, we already have some commitments, for sure, and we want to, yes, a lot. But today, the model has changed. The day when we had one sponsor, you could say, okay, you got all the races. Now you have to work out who gets what races, and it don't just happen overnight. We have to work through some of that yet. 
And are you committed to going to three cars next year, or is that just an option, but you're also evaluating other options? We're committed. Thank you. Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. I want to clarify one thing and then ask Kyle a question. Third charter? Do what? Your charter for the third team? I'm not ready to talk about that right now. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to make sure I caught it. Second question. Kyle, can you talk about now, I think on pit road last week, you said you didn't have any help after the race, that you were pretty frustrated, obviously. Uh, very excited about this new team. How do you move on now? How hard will it be to continue on over at Toyota and at Joe Gibbs Racing? Uh, you're a professional, you want to win races. Can you talk more about that, please? Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it's, to me, it's not hard at all. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still ready to go for the final, what, seven weeks that we have left to go for this season. So I've been with those guys for a long, long time. And I, you can ask Joe Gibbs how many times I've ever laid down in a race. I think it's never. So um, my chance to be able to go out there this weekend, we're going to one of my favorite places. We're going to one of my best places, Bristol, Tennessee. So, um, you know, no, no, nobody's really made too many laps around that place with this new car yet. So it's all about how we unload with not having a whole lot of practice and that sorts to be able to sort through our car and what we have. But, um, you know, there's no reason to say that we can't come out of Bristol with enough points to move on to the next round and we can go fight another day. Um, what's after that? Texas. Yeah, and Clara, I told Tyler the same thing. We're real racers, and real racers never lay down. They never quit. They still want to go out and win. I told him this morning when I met with him, we still want to win that championship and go out and win races just like Kyle's going to do. Yeah. Any final question before we get a photo up here and then do breakouts? If not, uh, while we move the table... Uh, Kyle and Richard are going to be up here to take a picture with the backdrop and then we're going to split up to where uh, the television folks will start here on the stage with Kyle and then print and radio will be to stage left, your right for breakout interviews as well and as RC said uh, a number of other folks that are here with us, Tori, Jim, Austin, Randall uh, are all here as well and, and why they're staging that again we just want to thank Kyle and Richard for choosing the NASCAR Hall of Fame for this location these announcements are special to the industry and for us to be a part of that uh, is something that we certainly do not take for granted so gentlemen thank you and best of luck next year and the rest of this year